Repairing a 2 inch scale foul attraction engine, part 8. Modifications to the bunker tank hand pump, removing the ash pan and painting the steam chest cover. Fixing the hand pump was not in my court for repairing the steam engine because it does need one or two other things doing to it. Fixing the bunker hand pump is very simple. Fixing the crankshaft driven pump is far from simple. Just to remove this pump, a lot of things have to be dismantled. And I'm sure that in common with all the other mechanical aspects of this engine, everything will be over tight and likely to break as I start to dismantle it. On this job for me at the moment, the bottom line is, I'm just going to modify the bunker hand pump. And once again, two out of the four bolts holding this part into the bunker had stripped the threads in two of the holes by being over tightened. Once I finally removed the pump, because it was very tightly fitted into this bunker, I had a look inside the tank, and I could see some pieces of lime scale sat in there. Pieces of detached lime scale like this can be quite difficult to remove, because as soon as you touch them to pick them up, they fragment into many other pieces, but this method of using some super glue on a large screwdriver gets the lime scale out in one piece, without breaking the pieces. Over now to the pump and possibly the worst repair I've ever seen in my life. Someone's taken the trouble to drill out the inlet pipe to quarter of an inch and put a quarter of an inch pipe in there. But look at the state of the soldering. Words fail me as to how bad this is. And this is what I mean. The more you look into things, people say, oh, the pump's not working, I think it needs an O-ring. And then you take it apart and you find out that there's a lot more wrong with the item than you were told. First of all, I'm going to replace this part. I remove the union and then I take the ball out. This is one of two stainless steel balls in the valve chest of the pump. Here are the crappy parts off the pump, and there's even blobs of solder stuck to the main body of the pump. The first thing to do is to see how serviceable the pump is, and as you can see there's quite a lot of play between the ram and the pump cylinder. Also, every one of the pump's linkages were ready to fall off, so I retightened the bolts and fitted lock nuts. Most of the wear is at the outer end of the cylinder. When I block up the inlet with my finger, I can feel some vacuum as I pull the pump ram back and forth. But the ram will be much better if I fit a couple of O-rings to it, which I'm about to do. But first, I have to put an end to this worst repair job in the world. I'm going to use a commercial fitting and turn it down to fit. Then I will fit a 3 16 of an inch diameter piece of pipe to this inlet and connect the pipe to this fitting using a commercial 5 16 by 32 union nut. Using my trusty Myford ML7R, I'm going to modify this fitting. This is not a good way to do it though. Never hold things by threads because you will just chew up the threads in the end. It's a much better idea to screw the fitting into a union nut and then hold the union nut in the lathe chuck. That way the threads will not be damaged. What I need to do is turn away quite a lot of the end of this fitting to go into the pump, and it doesn't need a long thread at this end. Did you notice that the entire part moved there because I haven't fully tightened the chuck onto the union nut, but it's more than sufficient for the job that I'm doing. After cleaning up the end of the thread using a piece of emery cloth, here's the part to compare with the old bit. All I need to do now is seat the ball. By putting the ball over the hole and hitting it just once with a copper faced hammer. Doing this makes the ball seat much better on the fitting. I don't recommend using a steel hammer because that will create a flat on the ball. Either use a copper faced hammer or a steel hammer with a piece of brass between the hammer and the ball. This is a stainless steel ball and stainless steel is not a very hard metal. I've refitted the washer and I'm applying some Loctite 542 to the thread and now I put the ball in position first, that's very important, and then just tighten up the fitting. In my opinion, this is a much more sensible repair than this mess. All I need to do now is silver solder a union cone on this piece of pipe and fit it as shown. I cleaned up the piece of pipe using my polishing spindle. For the next part of the job, I'm using my Boxford lathe and as I frequently do in these tutorials, I'm showing how not to do it. This is running far too fast. Even with lubrication, it's not going to work very well. So, using the back gear, I slowed down the lathe, and now I can use this very thin parting tool to make two grooves, yes, two, 
I thought it would fit two O-rings to make sure that I get a good seal between the piston and the wall of the pump cylinder. This is a very simple job. How deep does the groove need to be? Well, I'll give you a clue. It needs to be deep enough so that the two O-rings end up exactly at the same diameter as the piston. If you want to look into the technical details, there are many charts on Google covering O-ring sizes and tolerances. I refitted the piston into the cylinder and I've fitted a lock nut because I don't want anything to work loose in service. Here I'm testing the pump in a small amount of water in an aerosol cap and it pumps perfectly. In this clip I'm refitting the pump complete with its brass base into the bunker tank. I think I mentioned earlier on in the video that a couple of the threads that these bolts screw into are actually stripped by someone being heavy handed. It's really important not to over tighten the bolts on models. Here I've reshaped the end of the pump handle slightly and radius the bottom part. It just makes it easier to move. And that's it for the pump. It's now working and ready for service. What I need to do now is pull these two pins out, one at each side that hold the ash pan in place. The owner was telling me that it was very difficult to put the ash pan back in position. I do have one or two ideas to help him with this, starting with maybe straightening the two pins that fit into the holes. I think originally someone had removed the paint from the steam chest and then stuck a metal badge on. Well, I'm actually going to paint the steam chest because the metal badge will stick far better to the paint than it will to just this piece of bare metal, which will go rusty anyway. The first part of the job is to brush on some cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner, just to degrease it. Then I squirted some etching primer into an aerosol cap, but I didn't shake up the etching primer very well, so the paint was far too thin. There was nothing for it but to use my unpainting brush. I haven't used this for a while, but it still works well. Then I shook the can of etching primer for a while to mix the paint, put some more in the aerosol cap, and painted it again. It's still a bit thin and patchy, but it will be fine when I give it the top coat of black paint. I'll play out this video with the engine running, and now the only noise I can hear when it's running is the sound of the oil gurgling up the blast pipe. And that's it for this video, I'm very close to the steam test which I'll carry out this week. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.